Small Rocks reporting from Down Under. I just want to do another report uh, on the Arctic ice because it's been a major uh, event. Um, we've had the uh, second lowest Arctic storm on record. Um, the most the strongest storm was uh, in 2012, which absolutely decimated the much thicker ice, and that reached a minimum of 962 millimars. Uh, well, this one went down to 970 millibars. It formed over the north central Siberia and tracked eastwards, crossing Wrangel Island last Sunday and entered the Beaufort Sea on Monday and exploded in intensity. So let's just uh, have um, a quick look at kind of how it how it looked. Okay. So um, I want to go on and just kind of see how the uh, ice looks in terms of thickness and uh, uh, volume and also uh, extent. So we'll just have a look at the normal uh, data. But then I just want to uh, also show, first of all, uh, what has happened to the ice and just how it is uh, broken up and what this might mean. And I also just want to briefly look at the, uh, the methane. Okay, so this is how it looks today on uh, Earth Null School. Uh, the, uh, it's still fairly turbulent in the Arctic. Uh, the, um, yeah, the winds are according to this 36 kilometers an hour up here and about 30 kilometers up here in the in in the Beaufort so um, let's just go on um, and uh, of course just yesterday it was announced that in fact not very widely uh, but it was announced that we have the lowest sea ice extent on record now um, and of course ever since 2012 that's been the one to beat and we've never quite made it back to there and so uh, that was the justification why uh, nothing could happen until 2040 or even the end of the century and this is how the sea ice concentration uh, looks today uh, not very many areas with 100% concentration uh, all of these areas I mean uh, you know 70 80 90 percent concentration um, but then of course the ice is also very very thin as we will see and here goes another version this is from the University of Bremen and this really shows it uh, quite clearly there's not very much ice there that's left untouched and that's another uh, version from the same from the same source uh, I think with these uh, things with concentration of course the the colors can be slightly um, uh, deceptive but of course then you've got to combine that with other forms of uh, evidence and this is where we've got to today I'm just going to be showing a, um, a video uh, with this after this uh, which shows the changes but earlier on I was saying really that the uh, the only area uh, of ice that would be left would be the turquoise area which of course was much bigger when I was saying it and now look at it this is the area of uh, thicker ice uh, and the rest is I think this is about 0.5 of a meter so one and a half feet and this is about 
a meter thickness, so that's three feet thick. And this, when I saw it, this really kind of alarmed me because as well as, you know, cyclones and weather patterns, which is all that they ever talk about, there's been this ongoing process over the years of erosion of the ice from underneath. And you can see why, look at all this, 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 this is the sea ice um, temperature anomaly. So all the sea, uh, except for down here is is a lot hotter or warmer than usual and look at this down here uh, so this shows the same thing for uh, globally and you can see all the areas the whole of the northern hemisphere the northern pacific here below alaska just a huge hot blob and just this hot area above siberia in between Canada and Greenland. And these are the actual sea temperatures. So this color represents temperatures up to 10 degrees Celsius. So is it any wonder? I don't think, I mean, even if there's a, a um, you know, a dramatic change in the weather patterns, uh, you know, we've still got this happening and the sea doesn't cool down that nearly so quickly and uh, I'm going to be coming to the back to this in a movie but this shows uh, I was able to get a, enough of a gap in the cloud because the whole of the Arctic is covered in cloud this clearly shows this is the uh, north of uh, either Alaska or Canada I'm not sure and this is the state of the ice and it goes right out to the uh, 80 degree north parallel. So here we're going in uh, even further and this is what's happening at the north of Canada and of north of Greenland so we'll be having another uh, look at that in the next segment. This is how uh, the Arctic looked like from um, NASA Worldview uh, on the 31st, so that's uh, yesterday, so that's really the latest data that I can get. Uh, just about the whole of the central Arctic basin is covered in cloud, so it's very, very hard. Uh, but uh, there was sufficient um, uh, clearing of the cloud to show what has happened in the uh, in the Beaufort Sea, so let's just uh, let's just go in, and uh, you can see here. So um, uh, you can see how the ice has melted here. The ice has started to to uh, uh, to, to break up. So let's just have a look. So we'll go in a wee bit closer and you can see uh, areas where um, the ice is just breaking up, unfortunately. And then we're into cloud and we're into cloud here. But there's, yeah, so that is how it looks. Doesn't look pretty, does it? So let's just have a, another look. Uh, yeah, and then uh, uh, down here. So it's all starting to uh, clearly uh, uh, to break up. And then uh, I'm not going to look at the uh, Russian Arctic because uh, I don't think anything has changed. So uh, let's just go to the 27th, so a lot of cloud, um, but I just wanted to have a look. So really this area uh, above uh, Greenland and this part of the Canadian um, 
uh, archipelago is completely covered in cloud, but there's also it's where the last remaining ice is. So let's just go in, uh, and you can see here just how close to the um, all of these areas, these inlets and things, they're all melted, and then above the Canadian Isthmus and above Greenland, it's uh, it's melted. So let's just go in a wee bit. You can see here all broken up. I think this is Greenland. Oh no, that's still Canada. Uh, and here, this is over Greenland. So, this is the area where there is still some relatively intact ice. Um, but I would say uh, anything short of 80 degrees north is just going to go in relatively uh, short order, unless there's a some sort of radical change uh, in the weather and we suddenly start everything freezing up again sort of prematurely but I don't really think that's going to happen so anyway so that's NASA worldview okay so uh, it's this sea ice thickness that really tells the story to me and if I was uh, to make a guess uh, from the thickness and possibly looking at the sea ice concentration, my guess would be uh, that the only left area of ice left would be that turquoise area. And you can see here just how small that gets. Uh, so, yeah, so that's sea ice thickness. Finally, uh, let's have a look at methane levels, which um, I really bow to uh, Margot's excellent work because um, she's following the, uh, uh, the, the the levels, the average uh, levels of methane uh, from the NOAA data. But this is something that I've never uh, seen before since uh, uh, Copernicus cams uh, change their color scheme. So let's just go ahead and just look at the last few days data.